our ships and make us live forever us who you have to cut me loose so i can show you i'm not trying anything funny old man brother was in charge. He ordered us to try and make contact with the locals. I told him it was a mistake. Of course, I was proven right. We were the only intelligent creatures on the planet. It was ours. We studied the flora and fauna, while the others obsessed over big game. I focused on the small. A new order had arisen, the primates. Then, I did something I knew my brother would never understand. I stole some of our precious Aurelia and gave it to my two favorites, Adam and Eve. I could have waited, let nature take its course. But why not give evolution a nudge? But I learned soon that the paradise was doomed. brother ordered us to take our ship and move underground. You see, the earth is hollow. In the center, you find enough Aurelia for all of us. Right in our faces, family. Don't point them anymore. Them? The Greys. That's what they're called. There are three generally accepted kinds of aliens. The greys, insectoids, and the reptilians. But nine times out of ten, what people report seeing are the greys. Have you witnessed any abnormal behavior by animals in your neighborhood? 
three different flocks of birds flew into our house the other day. I would say that qualifies. And have you experienced the feeling that you might not be in control of your own body? How do you know all this? You are not alone in this. Why are the Greys, or whatever they are, so interested in us? What makes us so special? Nothing. There's nothing special about you. I'm sorry. You were hoping for a different answer. But this is beyond our comprehension. What answer would a lab rat understand from a scientist in a white coat putting electrodes in its brain giving it cancer? I've interviewed literally thousands of people who claim to have been visited by the Greys. People think of aliens as these beings invading our planet in some great cataclysm, destroying monuments, stealing our natural resources. But it's not like that at all. The invasion already happened. No one knows exactly when, but they're here. They've been here. Do you know what they want? They seem to be studying us, experimenting on us. One thing we know for sure is they use our fears against us. They took control. The others were already among us. But the visitors didn't just get here. They've been here for years. For decades, they've been implementing a plan that will result in the extermination of every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth. These posing as humans established themselves in all facets of life, whether it be business, government, religion, the military. It took years exterminating anyone who survived. The others are readying themselves for the fifth wave. They have the ability to inhabit human hosts and control their actions. They look just like us. We can't trust anyone anymore. How are we supposed to fight the others if we don't know what they are? We have been invaded by another species who erase our minds to take our bodies. It is no longer they don't like human beings. In their history, in their teachings, the Andromedans say that they were taught that this universe was here for them, that they were left here and told it was theirs to rule. But when they started traveling, they ran across other races, and they were able to conquer many of those races. And how they conquered those races was through genetic altering. Now, our government, the United States government, the world government, the new world, whatever you want to call it, wants to implant everybody. Do you think what he is saying sounds credible or just a bunch of lies made for entertainment? Mind you, this was filmed in the 90s and it has been almost 30 years since this was filmed. Put your idea in the comments below if this sounds credible or not. Extraterrestrials, they can't be bothered with that stuff. That, those are toys. That's not permanent. You can always lose the hand. It can always burn out. You could always die. In extraterrestrials, they don't value gold or silver. They value genetics. So what they do is they will come in, conquer a race, and genetically alter it. And it is the genetics that they put inside these races that alters their frequency, their sound, their thoughts, everything about them. Apparently the Greys were much more human looking at one time. They, as a race, were captured approximately 893,000 years ago. According to Moranay, the first thing they did was they slaughtered almost all of the women. The reason they do that is to control the birth process. And what they did was they started to genetically alter the women, the females of that race, so that all the children born after that were genetically altered. The Draconians are a very large reptilian race. Um, they're known as the Drax. There is a royal line 
of the draconian reptilian race and they're called the sea car they range anywhere from 14 15 to 22 feet tall they can weigh up to 1800 pounds they do have winged appendages and they are they are awesome awesome beings uh, they're extremely clairvoyant they're extremely clever and they can also be extremely sinister they uh, uh, apparently were brought to our time and space, our universe, in full physicality. Somebody brought them here and dumped them here. I don't know, and the Andromedans still don't know. But they were brought here in physicality and they were taken to Alpha Draconis and stars nearby because it gave them the greatest chance of survival. So they were kicked out of some other place. Anyway, they are definitely a major factor to be reckoned with. Um, they, for, for the most part, are service to self. They do not care for the human race because when they were dumped here, they were told that this was theirs to command. So whoever did this really screwed up. And they still have this mindset. They were one of the first to chart our solar system. In fact, they were the first of the ET races to actually put their flag on it and say it's theirs. Apparently, they, some of them still have the attitude that everything on it, in it, still belongs to them. And um, I understand that some of them have been coming back and more will be coming back. Now, this, it's gonna get real interesting, folks. I, I can't begin to tell you how interesting it's gonna get. Um, they apparently were, they have had space travel for three billion years. They are, they are a remarkable race. They really are. But they have an attitude. <laughs> and um, a, lot of, a lot of human races in our galaxy and outside our galaxy have had problems with them. And, um, you know, I don't want to say that all of them are like that, but that's really all that I've heard from the Andromedans. They've had major problems, as all the other races have. Um, they are definitely reptilian. They look like uh, Velopsa raptors, except they're like 22 feet. And they're smart, they're intelligent, they can build. Um, they're just very, very different from us. Uh, they apparently attacked Lyra, or came across human colonies in Lyra. Now, the human race was not created in Lyra, okay? It was brought there to survive. And again, the Lyra, from what the Andromedans have told me, for some reason, once they go back approximately 427 million years, they just don't know what else is there. For some reason, there's no history beyond that, even though the physicality is there. So I don't know if it's being blocked from a higher level or what. They don't even know. Um, the Draconans were flying through there. They came across as human colonies who were, made, who were agricultural in nature. Um, basically, because of their talents of horticulture and, and uh, plant science, they were literally um, making the planets greater and better. Little gardens. When the Draconans flew by and they saw this incredible wealth of food, um, they basically wanted to control it. And apparently there was a misunderstanding between the lion races then, who were human, and the reptilian race, because the lions wanted to know more about the draconians and the reptilian race before they gave them what they wanted. And apparently the uh, draconians and uh, the draconians misunderstood it and literally went back and then attacked, attacked the planets and uh, killed a lot of people blew up three planets and um, the Lyrans were literally forced to migrate and scatter into different parts of our galaxy. So it, it, it did in a way facilitate colonization and I, you know, I, I wrestle with whether the, the Draconans were planted here specifically to force us to evolve or if there's some other agenda here. I, I simply don't know that. Um, but that's basically what I know. I do know that not only them, but others, other reptilian races that are descended from them, um, also 
the uh, uh, draconans, the reptilian races, are master geneticists. And I'm told that most of the dinosaurs and um, uh, many other life forms that were on Earth were brought here um, then. Also on Mars, apparently Mars was very much like the Earth at one time. And they came to Mars first. That's literally where our human form was created, by the way. Um, was on Mars. That's where the primate and the human genes were brought together. Was on Mars. And then we were brought here to work as slaves in the mines. Okay? Um, so we're still working for a paycheck. <laughs> and uh, um, they... They, um, they enjoy human flesh and they enjoy children mostly for two reasons. One, they don't have the pollutants, the caffeine, the nicotine, and things of that, uh, all the processed foods that the adults have. And two, when they're put into a state of fear, their energy field and their adrenaline just explodes and they get a rush from it. You know, um, You know, be dedicated to family and be dedicated to each other, folks. That's the only way we're going to get through through a lot of this. The Draconans are here now. Where there are 1,833 of them that have been living underground between 100 and 200 miles beneath the surface. They've been here, some of them have been here a long, long time. They have lifespans that are thousands of years. They're carnivorous. They are not friendly to mankind, at least the ones that are here. Are they carnivorous? They eat humans? Yes. And they need to be, they won't eat a dead human, it has to be alive at the time of the kill. There are preferences to children. If this is truly the case, it would explain where a good portion of the missing children go and how so many children vanish each year without a cause. You know, and we've been told, people say, well, you better not talk about the reptilians. Well, you know, uh, bull, why not? According to the Andromedans, uh, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in the Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are they going? Why are we allowing this to happen? Why should people stay in denial about it? Now, how are they able to do it? How are they able to come up out of this, from underground? Modeling systems everywhere. They're being helped by the Greys, and also there are Groups within the higher echelon that are actually helping them acquire this. So human beings are abducting the kids and giving them to the greys who in turn give them to the alpha draconians? That's right. That's part of the deal. They won't come up as long as we feed them down there. Why else are they dangerous to humanity? Because they don't like us. And what are they willing to do with humanity? Eat us. There's no need for us. I mean, look, look at where we are. Look at us right now as a civilization, as a society. They don't need anything. They have all this technology that they want. We can't really offer them except maybe work, do some work for them. But they don't need all of us to work for them. They don't respect human life in any way whatsoever. Mankind on a whole is really agricultural. We really, as a race, if we were left alone, would be nurturing the earth. We would be living in tribal communities like the Native American Indians did. That would explain why we're all so miserable now. We have all gone astray from our essence. That's really our nature, our essence. You know, the cities and, and, and the culture that we're living in now has totally cut us off from the land, from who, what our real essence is, which is nature. More of us really need, need to start taking the perspective that what we're doing here isn't right. We need to get in touch with, with what's out there. The whole idea that, God, how did we get here? What makes me be here? as opposed to going home after work, turning on TV, watching three hours of television, going to bed, getting up the next morning, going to work, and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, like robots. Throw the televisions away. Feed your mind. Feed your mind with, with, with spirit, with questions about existence, about what it is we're doing here, why we're here, what the hell is really going on, why is it that I have all these material things and I'm still miserable in my life?